everyone. Welcome back to Data Donuts. My name is Darren. I'm here with my friend and colleague, Stephen Homestead. And today we're going to talk about data visualization. But before we get into that, I would like Stephen to share a little bit about himself. Hey, Aaron. Thanks for having me on the show. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to share about data visualization and uh, about myself. My background comes in the form of a few different trajectories, one of which is uh, music composition. I studied that uh, at uh, the community college level, the uh, UC, and then also got my master's over at Cal State Fullerton. And it was after that that I got into grant writing and then data visualization followed suit. It was kind of like my life was flowing like a river. And so um, in addition to music, I'm also interested in creativity. And so using visuals and visuals to communicate really went well when I needed to communicate something for the nonprofit world or for the academic world. Um, and so I just view it as part of uh, communicating. Yeah. Excellent. And it really leads us to our first question is, how do you bring creativity and art to data? Hmm. I was challenged when I went to Chicago seeing modern art as a teenager. And that experience caused me to expand my definition of what art was, because if a museum thought that a pile of bricks on the floor was art, how could I frame that for myself so that I could experience it as art? So growing up and, and experiencing more music and more art, I came to a personal definition that is art is a creation that speaks and that art is in conversation with the viewer. That has done a great job in encompassing also reports and presentations in the business world or in the academic world or in the nonprofit world when we need to present information to a client or to a governing body that communicates something. So if I was to draw a Venn diagram, I would have those overlap in the center where it's like communicating an artistic idea or communicating a data set. That's excellent to hear, Stephen. I really liked your definition behind that. I think that's something that's really cool and really something we should have kind of in the back of our mind as we create data visualizations is what is the message we're looking to speak, you know, and are we putting it in a way that really engages people? And you, based on your current role now, and it's in relation to um, making qualitative data visualizations. How do you do that? Hmm. When I think about qualitative or quantitative data visualizations, there are certain ways that you can map information where you can kind of assign a set, a visual symbol whether that's uh, percentages in a pie chart or um, even using a table to, to showcase certain numbers. Um, in terms of qualitative research, I know I'm not talking necessarily right here about, about visualizing it, but I think a key is listening. A key is listening to the words, listening to the tone, if you have a recording or if it's like an in-person interview and kind of boiling that down. It takes um, perhaps a little bit more soft skills. Uh, I find that empathy is important. Um, context, being a part of a, of a culture, uh, whether it's your work culture or business culture, or um, whether it's doing a little bit of research yourself to understand who is being interviewed um, or who is giving the, the written uh, or, or textual response. Um, you can sometimes make a case for uh, like, like uh, word usage and you can just chart like how many times was the word uh, acceptable used versus excellent and, and visualize excellent much larger than the word acceptable if more people used it. Um, but that is that is a fascinating that is a fascinating area where like social sciences and like math and geometry and art can kind of all come together in creating something that's compelling and understandable. 
I think that's awesome. And as we start putting these together in the future, what recommendations do you have for others putting together their data visualizations? My recommendations are to know who your audience is. Um, when I worked for a market research company, if my audience was a group of engineers, they wanted a lot more uh, data presented and they were much more comfortable with uh, really big charts or even tabs of a, of a spreadsheet a program. Whereas if I was presenting to executives or a marketing team, they wanted things boiled down and presented perhaps with a little bit more uh, visual impact or sometimes even panache or something clever, um, like having a, a, a pie chart for a bakery using actual images of a type of pie that they serve. Um, that's just one example of kind of like that way you can bring cleverness to the audience if that's what they're looking for it. A second thing would be to balance being clever with being clear. So if you have a, a unique idea about how to visualize some data, but it makes the data less clear, you have to make sure that you're balancing that so that um, the clarity of what you're trying to communicate is still something that the client or the, uh, the audience receives. And those are really sound words of advice. And I really appreciate you really sharing this insight today. And so it leads to our bonus questions. So I've heard the word data said a thousand different ways, data, data, data. There's no right way I've heard to say it. Um, how do you say it? I have listened to myself say it as I've been interviewed by you. And I think I've said it both data and data. I think when I use it standalone, it could be that I say data. And when I say it with visualization, I might say data visualization. So maybe someone could go back and do a textual analysis of my interview. And then we could take it's up in the air. Definitely. Then we could take that interview and, and then make a visualization out of it. <laughs> That's cool. And so my second question is, uh, what's your favorite type of donut? Just down the street from me is a, is a donut store that serves burgers and donuts. And on Sundays, they have a blueberry old fashioned. And I hadn't been there on a Sunday before. And when I discovered that, it instantly leapt up to the top of the top of the heap for me. Excellent. Yeah, yeah blueberry is one of my all time favorites. Yeah. So I, I would have to agree. Is that um, up where you're at now or actually down south? In Orange oh, it's it's down south in Orange County. Yeah, I haven't I um, I'm currently uh, zooming in with you for this interview up in Seattle and, and people recommended some some donut shops, but I haven't I haven't gone out to get mine. I was going to eat one while we talked, but uh, it's funny. Knowing about that blueberry old fashioned can whet our appetites for a, a future donut. Most yeah. definitely, most definitely. Well, thank you so much, Stephen. Today's been fun. I appreciate you sharing your insights and thank you everybody for watching and have a great day. Thank you, Aaron.